YouTube, what is going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome to a new potential series I am going to start depending on whether or not you guys actually enjoy uh, this first video and the second one. This is the original Horse Racing Manager. Now, I'm not sure how many of you guys have actually played this game. Uh, keep in mind, this game is much, much older. So in comparison to the Horse Racing Manager 2 that you guys have uh, come to be familiar with on, this, on my channel, they are night and day different, but it's still from... I think the main parent company. Um, there may have been some differences uh, in some of the development stages or some of the development companies, I should say, but I think the main company that's responsible for the series uh, was still responsible for this game. So this is technically Horse Racing Manager 1 or Final Stretch Sim. It has like two or three different names and I don't know why. So for starters, what we're going to do here, actually, let's just go to credits. Um, yeah, see, this company is not actually the company that was... So these are just individual people, but the company itself was not actually on here. Now, I am playing this on Mac because it's hard to find it on Windows. And if you do find it on Windows, it's literally like over $100, like USD, which is absolutely ridiculous. And it's so frustrating because I used to have this game on my PC when I was a kid. I was like in eighth grade or something, and I had this game on my PC. And now, like I said, you know, if you find it, it's damn near hundred dollars so I'll probably do a look again soon or search to see if it's cheaper um, if anybody has it um, but I've looked at a lot of places and they're all expensive so that's really frustrating I was able to find it for free on my Mac and I couldn't even tell you where I found it um, where I was able to actually acquire it when I found it on my Mac and this is I found this well over a year ago and you know I, I haven't touched it since till today really so um, yeah what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just hop into the regular race mode right quick we're not even gonna go into stable mode stable mode is obviously um, the career mode so to speak so we're not gonna do that yet I just kind of want to show you guys how the game plays so we're gonna hop into race mode we're just gonna hop on easy uh, also keep in mind for whatever reason when I record I try to do a test recording, um, and my volume, the game volume, it, I can hear it, but for you guys, it, there's no game volume. I don't know why that happens. It's extremely frustrating. So, unfortunately, unless I can find a fix, I'm just gonna have to put some kind of soft music in the background because I think that'll be better than just than just listening to my voice with no game audio at all. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, I'm gonna call myself my channel. Really frustrating with the game audio. I have no idea what happened. I think the first time I tried recording, the game audio was working, and then I tried recording again, and it just has not worked. And um, yeah, I, I don't want to waste too much time trying to figure it out. Kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. I mean, you're really not missing much. The audio in this game um, is not anything special, especially in comparison to the newest one. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a harness race here. We're going to do this World Cup. See, as you can see, they have all these cups. They have North, Italian, French. Um, some of these I'm not familiar with uh, at all. So, yeah, lots of cups in here. Um, like I said, the interface is very, very, very basic. Uh, not the prettiest, but keep in mind, this is also a game I grew up on. This is like my first game that I ever played with harness horse racing, so it's always going to have my love. And it's much easier to play this game when it comes to the harness horse racing aspect of it. It is so much easier. It's not like HRM 2 where the, you know, sometimes your horses um, respond to, you know, if you, if you just hit the, um, hit the acceleration button once in HRM 2, your horses will like shoot through with crazy acceleration and then if you drop it down one they slow down all the way this game is not like that at all which is why i wanted to play it again and which is why i loved it so much hrm2 that's the only issue it has and i tried fixing those files myself i spent quite a bit of time and it didn't really work out so it's just one of the things that's really frustrating about hrm2 and that's why i haven't really touched the game so as you can see, uh, you can look at the different horses here in this game. Of course, all of them pretty much have French names because the developer's French. Um, so, yeah. Got, you know, your different colors and whatnot. So, since we're doing a short race, I'm still going to go with the horse with the highest endurance, which is going to be Shamer Al Sheba, which is personally one of my favorite horses I used to play as. Milky Way also wasn't a uh, too bad of a horse. We're going to go with Shamer Al Shema or Sh Shaba. I said Al Shema. Golly. Um, pretty solid horse. So we'll go ahead and do that. Jockey. Eh, jockeys don't really matter. Um, usually you want to go with experience. We'll go with O Le Proge. I do not speak French. I'm not going to pretend I speak French. So the butchering of names will probably be a commonality on the channel. So hopefully anybody that is French doesn't take too much offense. So uh, we're not doing all these races. In fact, I'm just probably going to do like uh, at least three. Just kind of give you guys a, a hang of uh, how things... Well, I'll do one harness horse racing, and I'll do 
a, a thoroughbred race. And then maybe we'll actually, in episode two, we'll actually start the stable mode and see how far we can get. I'm still going to start it on easy, though, because, uh, yeah. All right, so Trot Group 1 International, yada, yada, yada. We are in race one. Technically, we can race in all of these races because this is just a regular racing mode. And as you can see, this interface is pretty similar to HRM2. Of course, like I said, it's just not as visually appealing, but you can change these. I think I'm not familiar, familiar with how to do it on Mac. Uh, the HRM2 that you guys have seen me play, I changed a couple of those um, interface options as far as the colors are concerned, um, just in Photoshop. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that here on the Mac. It's a little bit different, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do that for this game. If I can, I will. But um, I'm not too crazy about it right now. We have a field of 20, a field of 20 horses um, in this. Golly. So as you can see um, here on the right, you got winnings, you got career records. Uh, you have, you know, their fastest times and, you know, kil uh, kilometers, of course, total races or stats, whether they've been injured. So still very in-depth, still very in-depth for horse racing manager. Um, here you got the basic um you know, conditions and information as far as the race you're about to compete in, the prize, the distance, the surface, etc., etc. Um, and what is this? Okay, this actually shows you the weather, shows you the ground surface, kind of gives you your classifications for the jockeys here on the right, um, as far as, you know, how good they are in their different categories, which is pretty important. So, um, I believe. So, yeah, so with all that being said, let's just go ahead and hop into our first race here. What's our gate position? Gate position 11. So we're going to be like in the second. I think we're going to be in the second row behind the number one horse. So that should work out pretty uh, well for us. Um, yep. So the start function is pretty similar to HRM2, of course. So you want to make sure you tap this as soon as it goes. And yeah. This, this is the game I grew up on. This is what got me into a HRM. Um, you know, just this this game as a series. This is what I grew up on. I'm sure some of you have. I'm not sure how many of you have, though, because this game is still kind of, in regards to its popularity to HRM, too. This game is, ironically, since it was the you know the, the first one of the predecessor, I feel like more people are familiar with HRM, too. I'm not sure how many people are actually familiar with this game. This is the first horse racing manager. This is the one I grew up on as a kid, and uh, it was really fun. It was really, really, really fun because I always wanted to play a harness horse racing game. And, you know, you're talking about back in like 2000 and, pff, 2005 or 2004. Um, there were no legitimate harness horse racing games out to this caliber at all. There were maybe many like flash games, but nothing like this. So, um, gosh, my phone's blowing up. Uh, so when this game, you know, when I finally found this game out by searching on the internet um i was so happy and i was able to buy it i think uh i bought it where did i get it i forgot where i got it. i think i should ordered it off of ebay back then and um yeah all right so we're coming to the stretch here we gotta we gotta create some room the ai are not helping us at all so we are running about 51 kilometers i'm not sure what the conversion is for kilometers to miles per hour um so keep that in mind. I'm going to try to move here. Can I move? Can I move? Can I move? Cool. All right. We can move. We're going to put this horse under the whip once. Don't break. Oh, we broke. Okay. Too much. And I only hit it once too, but I guess I really should have just kind of left, let the horse stay where it was at. That's all good. It's all good. No biggie. At least you can actually get out of the way and you can um, maneuver. You guys that have watched me play HRM2, you know how frustrating it gets when the AI don't move. I saw somebody leave a comment on one of my videos maybe a couple of weeks ago saying it's not smart to run five wide in um, the harness horse race and, and you know those harness races. And I'm like, if you watch the videos, my guy, you would see sometimes you have no choice in this game because the AI literally don't move or they block you and they prevent you from making any moves except to go to the outside. We're going to go ahead and run another race since we kind of botched that one. Um, yeah, I mean, the AI literally give you no choice. So if you want to compete and you want to have a chance to win the race, you may have to go five or six wide around the curve. Yes, it's not smart. I think every, you know, average horse racing fan knows that. But sometimes you just don't have an option, man. 
You just do not have an option except to go five wide or six wide or four wide on, on these curves because the AI, and especially in HRM2, the AI in that game are just programmed just to do dumb stuff, man. They just block you. They don't get out the way. They're not responsive to your maneuverability. It's really annoying. It's pretty annoying. Okay, so we are running a little bit fast here, faster than I would like, but we are, I mean, as far as our positioning is concerned, you usually see horses still wear on masks. It's kind of funny because the horses here in this game can really drop off, man. Like sometimes if they don't get a good start, they can be all the way back there. So it's different. This game is still pretty solid. I mean, it's a very, very basic visual game. But I mean, it still has a lot of the same features that HRM2 has just without the annoying AI, which is personally why I wanted to get back into this game. And this is something I think I will do for a longer series. HRM2, I just decided if I go, if I play it again, I'm probably not going to do the harness horse racing mode, unfortunately, because that one is just too frustrating. I'll do the thoroughbred mode. And um, yeah, because the harness one is just way too annoying. The AI for the thoroughbred mode, they are much better. But the harness mode is, is really frustrating. Okay, so we... We may have just enough stamina to finish this race. If I put this horse under the whip right now, we're probably going to break. So, you know what? I'm just going to keep the horse right here. Keep the horse right here. Let's go ahead and move out just a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and increase that speed. We got a little bit of distance to go. We want to make sure we got room. I don't want to break again. I actually want to see if... Okay, yeah. See, that's why we broke. Um, the meter to see if you're going to break or not is this right here in the very, very left, this red bar. I didn't realize it was going up as I was increasing my speed. Whoa, we might get this win. We might get this win. Oh, we just tired out. Just tired out the line. Yeah, I ran a little too fast in the beginning. Still ended up getting fourth. Not bad. As you can see, it's much easier to actually to win. Granted, this is also an easier difficulty, but still the AI are much smarter in this version of the game. How ironic. They are much smarter in this version of the game and not as robotic as they are in the newer one. So we still ended up coming in fourth place. Not too bad at all. Um, you still get the same comments from your jockey afterwards or whomever. Uh, yeah, we started out a little too fast. So that is the harness horse racing um, aspect. Let's go ahead and run a thoroughbred race. So we're going to stick to easy for now. So I'm not trying to show out for nobody. I just want to show you guys how this game plays. Gallup Racer. Now, we want to go do shorter races. Spring Cup. I don't know any of these cups for the most part. So I'm just looking for anything where there's really short races. Okay, here we go. We got a 2,000. Oh, Kentucky. No, crap. The Kentucky Derby, instead of being spelled with an E-R, it's I-R. They actually have the real races in here? Preakness Stakes? No kidding. Okay, I didn't actually know that. I never paid attention to that when I was growing up playing this. That's actually really cool because I don't even think HRM2 has the real races. Let me check some of these other cups. Can I? It's actually Melbourne Cup. Raiders Mile. Yeah, Raiders Field. Yeah, I, I recognize some of these. Wow, that's actually that's really cool. I didn't even know that was in here. Like I, like I said, growing up, I never really paid attention to it, obviously. Um... Okay, cool. So let's just go back to the Sun Cup. So we'll go ahead and do the Kentucky Derby then. Uh, we'll stick to the same horse, Shamer Al Sheba, and same jockey. Uh, when you're playing the normal race mode without, you know, doing the season mode, you the same horse you use for a harness race, you can use for a thoroughbred race and vice versa. Wow, that's actually really cool. I did not know that at all. So we have a field of 18 here for the Kentucky Derby. 500,000 is first place prize money kind of a long race um yeah we're going once all the way around let's just go ahead and race all right so hopefully you guys are enjoying this let me know in the comment section below if you would like to see me actually do a series on this okay i gotta move this up and i gotta make sure i get a good start the start thing you have to tap it once and then tap it again you see you have to kind of tap it here to get that match and we got a pretty decent start i don't want to go be going out too fast let's see here you still have um, these three um, things for your, you know, maneuverability and all that. Um, you know, uh, the wind fatigue. Um, yeah, all of that. So this is the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> oh man! Like I said, growing up as a kid, I never paid attention to this stuff. I was just so just into playing this game. I was never paying attention to the real tracks and all of that. Um, Running on grass for the Kentucky Derby. That's <laughs> that'll be the day, won't it? Running on turf. 
Okay, so we're currently sitting in 12th place. I think we're doing good on stamina, so we should be able to make a pretty good run here in the stretch. Oh, my horse is actually wearing the blinkers here. Okay, now the field's moving a little bit. It's fine. Yeah, turf for the Kentucky Derby. Well, that, that, that would be pretty... That would actually kind of be an exciting race. It would be shorter, but could you imagine the speed? Could you imagine the speed? That's one thing I like about turf races. Those horses really tear it up, man. So imagine something like that for the Derby. That would be amazing. And I know there's, there's stakes races like that, but still, for the Derby itself. Okay, so we are falling back a little bit. I think we can... One thing I have to get used to is the speed. Um... And kind of being able to uh, monitor that. All right, let, let, let's get going here. Let's get going here. Okay, we got plenty of stamina left. We are in dead last. Let's make a run. Can we make a run here? <laughs> Might be too little too late. Yep, too little too late for sure. I have plenty of stamina to go. I should have gotten going sooner. But at least I had stamina. It's not like running out of stamina. Dead last in the Kentucky Derby. That's a bummer. Oh, well. Um, waited inside patiently, buried inside for the stretch, never competed for the win. Yeah, I waited too long. It's all good. Let's run another one. I wanted to run a shorter one anyways, 1,400 meters. Yeah. The Keo Hay Cup. So let's see how this one plays out uh, for us. All right. Increase this. Make sure we get a good start and establish that position and keep it. Oh, terrible start. Can I redo that? No, I can't. I'm screwed. All right. Bad start. Um... 1,400 meters. How many furlongs is that? Is that six furlongs? Six or seven furlongs? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Anyways. The main thing in this game is actually just keeping up with the field. Honestly. And then once you're able to keep up, just monitor your stamina. How fast are these horses running? 66 kilometers. Yeah, I'm like, okay, they got to be running pretty fast. I'm almost at 66. I mean, 67 for sure. All right, let's move out here. Only thing is, I wish the jockey's butts weren't so high up in the air, you know? <laughs> kind of takes away from you being able to see the horse unless you get a certain camera angle going. Oh, I'm going out way too far. All right, let's roll. I think we got enough stamina. I think we got enough stamina to roll. Let's see if we can actually get this dub. Down the stretch we come. We are in fourth place. Oh, we got stamina to roll. We got stamina to roll. We are making a run here. This is pretty close. <laughs> Oh, this is pretty close. I'm getting burned. My horse has reached its speed. I have the stamina. There's nothing left to do. There's nothing left. I had this. I had the stamina left. I guess Shamer Al Sheba is not that great of a thoroughbred horse compared to a harness one. I didn't even. I, I should have checked its stats. I forgot their stats do differ. Um, you can use the same horse, but their stats are different for harness and thoroughbred racing. Huh. All right, let's go back to the main menu and let's see if I can actually... I do want to run one more thoroughbred race. Um, you guys got the idea for the harness one, right? But actually, you guys got the idea for the thoroughbred one. So let's actually want to run a harness, a trot. Running race more because I know it's not a whole lot of games with this aspect in it. So I would think people would probably be more uh, interested in that. Okay, we'll do whatever this cup is called. I don't even know what it's called. Um... Should I choose a different horse? Endurance is always what I want for harness races. Um, technique. Actually, we'll get this horse is pretty solid because also um, discipline, uh, resistance. You know what? We'll we'll try Co Coco Titiche. I'm guessing that's not. Like I said, probably butchering the French names. It's all good. <laughs> All right, very short distance, 1,600 meters. This will be the last one for this video. We'll see how this uh, turns out. But like I said, comment section below. You guys let me know if you want. Well, I think I'm still going to do a series. It's just, you know, nobody wants to see it, obviously, at all. Then I probably wouldn't. But as long as there's going to be some interest in it, for sure. Long term. I'm really asking long term. Well, does anybody think they'll be interested in seeing me play this for a while? I'm definitely going to start it. I don't know how long it will continue. All right, so we got started here. Let's see what the rest of the field is running. 46 kilometers. We're running 48, so we want to dial back down about 47. Let's see, 47 riding too fast. 46 riding too fast. Yeah, 40. Let's let's dial it down to 46. Hopefully, this will be enough. Uh, we want to preserve our stamina, which I think is green. No, green is wind. Okay, so blue is wind. I think green is stamina, and then red is like maneuverability. No, red is stamina and green is maneuverability. Got it. 
Okay, now we're going a little too slow. How the heck do we go from 46 down to 42 that quick? All right. So let's go ahead and put this on. Stamina and Wind Fatigue. Just to see if we can make a little run here in the stretch. I don't think we're going to win this because I don't think I got the greatest starts. I got started off really slow. Um, yeah, we should have just enough stamina in the end. I'm going to stay kind of right here. Sometimes these horses literally stay single file, man, all the way through. All right, let's go ahead and make a move out now. Let's kind of put this back to, to middle grounds here. All right, let's, let's just increase this speed. I don't want to whip yet because if you whip too soon while you're increasing speed, that's how you get that. Uh, that's how you break. Oh, I'm not going to let you cut me off like that. Okay, we got a pretty strong run going. If I whip now, the horse is definitely going to break. I think I just kind of just got to let it be. All right, let's move this to stamina. Oh, pretty strong run here. Pretty strong run. Ninth place, closing in. Closing in. Let's increase that speed a little bit. Oh, I broke at the last second. I wasn't watching. I went just two notches too high. Anyways, if we would have finished that race, we would have came in in probably six or seven. So you guys get the idea. You guys do get the idea. I literally hit the um, the acceleration key literally one notch too high. I just wanted just to keep it right where it was about to, but I wasn't going to. And I just double tapped it too, too high. Um, so, yeah, guys, that is the racing aspect of the game. But to at least show you some things before we actually get started on the next video, it's a stable mode. I am going to go ahead and get it started here right now. So we're going to go into stable mode and you will create and manage a new stable. You make important choices that can not be changed later on. You can choose your country. Um, each place in the country obviously has 10 different um, places you can set up for your stable. It's the same as HRM2, so for most of you that are familiar at least with that game and how it works, it's the same concept here. So we're going to pick a country here. Um, as you can see, countries are known for different things. We're going to be doing uh, trotting, so we will look for the country that is best. Obviously, USA is ideal, but it's very competitive as well, so that's also something I didn't really think about back in the day I would kind of I would always race here because I was familiar with it but in, in hindsight I was seeing you know in retrospect long term it was not smart to start off there with the competition being uh, so hot um, so yeah there's no trotting in Japan um, here or England so I think a good place to start with relatively low competition at least to get us started because I think we can I think at some point you can transition I think you can. Um, I think Canada would probably be a solid starting place. Um, it's at 75, competition's at 60, as opposed to the USA, it's at 90 for the trot, but competition is at 90 as well. Setup cost is pretty expensive. Um, Sweden isn't bad, the weather is unfavorable, which means we're gonna have a lot of sloppy condition racing, but. You can see 75 here for trot. Winnings are at 80, not terrible. Competition's at 60, and the setup cost is 70. So if we're trying to save money and still be in a decent place, we should either race in Sweden or Australia. Australia pretty much is just one notch below Sweden in regards to the trotting ability. The competition-wise, it's a little bit higher. Setup cost is a little higher, but weather is favorable. Um, So that is something to consider. Winnings are about the same. I'm not too pressed about the weather, to be honest. Um, I could start off in USA to begin with, but I don't know if that's a smart idea. I really don't. I think now that I'm more knowledgeable about this in the game, maybe I could start it off, but it's, it's going to be more competitive. Even though I'm playing on e easy, it still may be a little bit, still may be a little bit difficult. So let's actually go ahead and just start somewhere kind of safe. Um, as I cut that setup cost for these countries are way too high. We're gonna go ahead and start in Sweden. Yeah, we're gonna take a chance start in Sweden. Um, setup cost is a little bit low. Competition is lower as well. Um, Australia would kind of be cool. Actually, you know what? Australia or Sweden? How will do Australia? It's a little bit more, but favorable weather. Okay. So we have ten locations to choose from. I think what I used to do is I used to choose a location that had a lot of um, um, stall space. So this location just um, is near the sea. It improves healing, but raises the infrastructure costs. And there's eight boxes, 166K. That's a little pricey. You got something like this at for 120K, you get six boxes. You get a hanger and a paddock and it's still near the sea. So that's not a bad deal. This one, $151 is a training center nearby. 10 boxes, paddock and career. 
Eh. Three stars, though, for the uh, boxes, two stars for the paddock. Something like this, uh, 138,000, you get four boxes. You get horsemanship at three stars and a circle of tether, also near the sea. Here, 61K. Um, forest is nearby, which improves fame, but raises infrastructure costs. Uh, there's also a vet clinic nearby, which means we'll have lower medical costs, but again, higher infrastructure costs. Good soil quality. Uh, structures closed less often, higher infrastructure costs as usual. Only two boxes. There is a riding alley, two stars at 61K. So that's not bad for the price. Poor soil quality, so that's not too good. Four boxes of hangar for 39. It's really cheap, but I'm not really digging that. In the breeding region, lower horses follow up costs, higher uh, in infrastructure costs, of course. That's pretty much the same thing. Uh, vet clinic nearby. Four boxes, a paddock, basically for 60k. Um, I'm not really looking into breeding right now. I can't even. I've, I've done it before. It's definitely pretty easy. Um, it's not too in depth, but you can get some good or bad horses out of it. Eight boxes, good soil quality for 61k. Um, you got 10 boxes for 172 for like ridiculous. And here, poor soil quality, two boxes, paddock, career, 38K. I'm not trying to pay over 100K, really, to start off. Unless, I think, I, you know what? Actually, this is the only deal. This is a deal for 100, over 100K I would pay over. 120K, you get six boxes, you get a hanger and a paddock, um, which isn't bad. This one is 151. Um, yeah, this improves healing, which means if our horses get injured, they will heal better and quicker, which is very important. Because the longer, if your horses get injured in this game and they're out for a while, you're really going to suffer unless you got a whole bunch. So you really don't want your horses getting injured. So it's important to be somewhere that does have um, something that can benefit their healing process. So that's why I'm considering that. This, yeah, you got a three star um, um, boxes, which three stars means it's upgraded to the max. One star means it's at the very beginning. You can upgrade each of these up to the next star. So, um, you know, you can get your paddock up to three stars, your career, so on and so forth. So, um, the places with one star means they're at the very beginning. Places with three stars meaning they are already upgraded to the max. Um, this is not bad for all these being at one star. Um, this for 151. I mean, it's not terrible. I, I'm, and I'm not. I don't think I'm trying to have 10 horses, to be honest with you. You got your paddock, and then you got your career. Um, you know, you got a riding alley and two boxes. This is usually. I think this is what I used to start off with, because um, it was 61,000, and you had a two-star riding alleys and two boxes for two horses. I don't know if I just want two horses. I might want three. The two might be safe just to start. And then this really just offers nothing of poor soil quality. I don't want that. Uh, four boxes and a paddock. Not bad. Um, breeding region. And then the vet clinic is nearby for lower medical costs. I, I might do that. For 60K, four boxes and a paddock. That, that might actually be pretty cool, to be honest with you. I really do like this one, though, at 120K. But I got to make sure I can win it. I don't think I'm going to have six horses anytime soon. So, um that for 138k and eh, four boxes of horsemanship at three star circle tether the sea is also nearby i mean that's not awful for that price but again i don't really know if i don't know uh we're just gonna go ahead and pick one because i'm sure you guys probably like pick already so we're just gonna go ahead and do this one we get a lower medical cost and um lower follow-up cost for breeding if we do want to get to that eventually so i'm gonna go ahead and do this um stable's name what did I call my stable in the previous game? I can't even remember. <laughs> um, let's see. HRG. HRG stables. Horse racing game or stables. We're just going to keep it simple. Uh, colors, colors, colors. Let's see. I don't even remember what colors I'm using in half of my games. I think in Galb Racer I got something with green going on. So we'll probably just stick with that. We'll get something with green, because I do like green for jockey silks. I'm not going to do the green and yellow. I want to do something different here. What would look nice? Green and orange? Green and orange is like a really weird color combo. <laughs> it's kind of funky. It's kind of funky. I don't really know what I'm going for with that, but it's kind of funky. I always want this um, stripe color that jockeys... Um, 
I forgot which jockey uh, wore it. I know a lot of jockeys in uh, Japan wear it. It's like the pink and yellow. And some American jockeys wear it too. I just can't remember their names. Pink and yellow. I might want to actually go with that, to be honest. That might be... Actually, hold on. How does the um, how does the red and yellow look? Because the pink and yellow is a little... Actually, no, the pink and yellow is all right. Yeah, for some reason, I, I like the pink and yellow uh, color combo. I, I can't tell you guys why, but I do. Um, it's, 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 yeah, it's, I'm sure some people may be questioning me. They're not questioning me. I do like the pink and yellow color combo for some jockey threads. I don't know. It just, it, it kind of looks nice sometimes. Um, reminds me of like lemonade colors, you know, and I freaking love lemonade. So that's realistically what I'm probably thinking of. Um, cap. Let's go yellow and pink actually with this. Yeah. Let's see. Ew. That looks awful. <laughs> Somebody's probably saying like it looks awful already, but you know. Um, I'm just going to stick with that, actually. Um, jacket, we'll stick with. Actually, can we do jacket with the stars? Can't even see the stars. Darn it. Checkers doesn't really look good. That doesn't really look good. Um, yeah, we'll just go with the circles. They're supposed to be pink, but they don't even look pink. And if they look red, they really stick out as red. That's kind of weird. What about black? I could do black. Oh. Hmm. The black? Oh, actually, you know what? That burgundy color is actually kind of nice. Maybe that's what I really need instead of the pink. Uh, that burgundy color actually might be a little bit better. Okay, I don't really like it for the cap, to be honest. I don't like it for the cap, but you know what? It might actually... Mm, that's here's what we're going to do. We're just going to stick to... Um, we'll keep pink for the center, and then we'll keep that as... Kind of keep this as burgundy. Got some chicken pox things going on. <laughs> the stripes. Um, the diamonds. Man, well, we'll just do that. It's funky. I know, but I want it. So, we're going to do it. We're spicing it up here. Literally, figuratively. Can that work? <laughs> All right. So, like I said, we're just getting started here. I'm not going to start a raise, but I at least want to show you guys how the, the interface and the setup is. That way, if you are thinking about trying to get this game, if you were even willing to pay the amount that it is for the Windows version. Like I said, I couldn't even tell you where I got it on Mac. I, I genuinely don't even remember. There's some funky music playing right now, and I wish you guys could hear it, and I never remember hearing this music ever. Anyways, um, it says... Oh, okay, can I kind of like... I don't want to hear this music. Can I turn that off? I cannot turn it off. All right. Anyways, this just says, Welcome to your stables. Um, it's basically telling you where everything is located, which I'm just going to explain to you guys. Anyways, I don't want this music. Um... That is one actually good thing about this game. You can actually load in your music, your own music, um, into this game as you're playing it, which is really cool. I used to always listen to like this old like 80s stuff that I'm still a huge fan of today while I was playing this game. So like I said, this game, considering how old it is and how basic it is in terms of just um, its look, don't judge a book by its cover. This game is still very high quality despite the, um, the actual look of it. So here uh this letter envelope up here is where you can check out your ads um you know news as far as what's happening um you know for different things that are happening in different races i don't really pay attention to that too much um you got your ads which will obviously tell you which horses are up for stale or what structures are available um like here for instance it says um there is a horsemanship ready at level two for a price of 13,000. I'm going to go ahead and uh, acquire that. That's a really good price at level two. And it shows you some horses here. Uh, there's a six-year-old um, listed at 7K, four-year-old listed, listed at 7K, good bloodline. Um, yeah, so this stuff is pretty pretty self-explanatory. You got your agenda, which is usually which will, this will show your races or if your horses have any, um, you know, vet appointments, stuff like that. You got your information. This usually shows your race results, whether or not your horses have gotten injured or anything, whether or not staff has quit or have gotten fired, whether or not, you know, building production has completed or whatever. Um, so that's where that all this boxes. This is obviously where all of your horses will stay. Um, they're called boxes, essentially, um, instead of what people would normally um, think of them as. So 
We can have four. You got your training, which same thing. Once we get our first horses, I'll be able to show you guys more of this. So that's probably what we should do. You got your race calendar here. Um, you got your and you know entries, which we have none. Uh, tracks. Uh, this actually shows you the different tracks in your actual region that you'll be racing on, which is really cool. So this is the national gallop track. This is the national trot track, and then this is the international, as you can see. So since we'll be doing trot. Uh, if we're running on dirt, we'll be on this track here on the inside, this basic oval for running on, I believe, the other surface, which is, uh, what is it? It's the black surface. I can't remember what it's called, but that's obviously what this outer perimeter is. And I believe, as you see, different tracks actually do have different sizes and all of that, um, which is really cool. And the, and the uh, you know, the locations, the designs. So like I said, this game is still very in-depth when it comes to the... Um, just just the details of the horse racing manager aspect and like I said you don't get the annoying BS you get in HRM2 with the AI so that, that's why I always loved this game I just I, it was hard to find it was really hard to find it on the Mac when I did like I said you know if anybody's I know people are gonna ask and I really wish I remember where I couldn't I couldn't tell you where I got it I really don't I just searched it up I just searched horse racing manager 2 free basically um, Windows or Apple. Like, like I said, I couldn't find it on Windows, and if I did, it was over $100. So for Apple, um, you know, or Mac, I mean, I just, uh, when, wherever I found it, I, I could not remember. So if you guys really want this game that bad, because um, what I also could do is I could do, I could upload it, I think, um, and then do a file transfer uh, like I do with the HRM2. I could do that for you guys, for those of you at least that have a Mac. Um, I could do that, but I mean, if you run into any issues, I would have no idea how to help you. I, I'm still very, very, I, I hardly ever use Macs, so I'm not really familiar with them like I am with Windows. So I cannot tell you how to solve any technical issues or problems. And I know that would become a thing um, eventually, so that's my only thing. Um, people will be asking me to help them with issues if, so if the game's not working. It's like I literally couldn't tell you how. So you got your maintenance cost here, um, obviously shows you the cost of your buildings, your staff, so on and so forth. That's self-explanatory. Um, let's go ahead and look at searching. So searching, this is where you obviously come to hire your staff. You need an assistant, you got your lads, you got your maintenance staff, you got your staff managers, stablemen, trainers, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously the better staff members are going to have higher salaries. Uh, the morale could also fluctuate depending on whether or not you're winning or losing, whether or not you have the proper um, buildings and facilities at your stable. So their morale can definitely fluctuate on a number of, of factors. So your, your your actual progress and your actual performance in this game can affect that. Um, you got your management here. So this is where you can delegate um, how you want certain people's positions, obviously, to be. Um, you know, and we're, we're going to do all this before this video ends. And this is a uh, section called planning, obviously, where you can uh, put focus on certain things. If you want to focus more on your, you know, uh, your horse's food being a priority, that way they don't have too many health problems. You can up this, which is it going to work now or what? I don't know if it's working now or not, but you can do that. Um, so. That is pretty much everything. Um, I would continue, but I want to make sure that this saves before I go any further. Like I said, the next episode, we'll actually go ahead and get our horses. We'll hire our staff and do all that good stuff. So let me make sure I can actually save right now. And um, we'll just say this is episode one. And that should do it here. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this first run of this game. For those of you that aren't familiar with it or have played it, and it's just been a long time. Uh, I'm excited to get back into this series. Obviously, without the frustration, this game is still challenging. Don't get me wrong. It's like I said, it's just a lot of frustration that is uh, taken out of it compared to HRM2. So, all for you guys, you do uh, obviously enjoy this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But I will be sent out to next time, and I will see you all later. Make sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you're new for weekly horse racing gaming content here on this channel. But that will do it. I will see you all next time. Have a great day.